everybody, Saul here. I have only one rule here. If it's animated, I'll comment on it. And I'm the kind of person who enjoys such quaint, wholesome things like blood and gore and universal destruction and the psychological torment of anything possessing sentience and also steak and fries. Therefore, a show like this, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, kind of flies under my radar. After all, I'm wearing crimson-tinted glasses of pure malevolence, so why would I care? But I have decided to take off those glasses of malevolence because I am nothing but adventurous. It's time for me to sweep away the clouds of darkness and take a look at the blinding rainbow. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda scared. So let's just get the history lesson out of the way real quick because there's not a whole lot to say. Okay. So, Star vs. the Forces of Evil was created by Daron Nefsi, produced by numerous different animation companies, including Mercury Filmworks and Rough Draft, and it aired on Disney XD on March 30th, 2015, with a total of 13 episodes consisting of 24 separate scenarios. Before the series even premiered, it was renewed for a second season, but there's no release date as of yet. Oh, the fun never stops in education land. So now, it's time for me to shed my dark and depressing outlook on life like a butterfly molting from a disgusting, moist, dark cocoon. Will I like what I see? Well, I have no idea. But let's not dawdle anymore. Let's dive right into Star vs. the Forces of Evil and take a look at this crazy rainbow! Ah! It burns! Now, I'm happy to say, for the sake of runtime, that this series plot is quite concise. Star Butterfly is a princess of a dimension called Muni, and upon her 14th birthday, she inherits her family's most treasured heirloom, a magical wand. Star then uses it to fuck everything on Muni over, and gets sent to Earth for training slash punishment. Upon arrival, Star moves in with Marco Diaz, a young man skilled in karate, while acting as a foreign exchange student. Things go tits up often in Star and Marco's lives, though, as a monster named Ludo tries to steal Star's wand and use it to take over the universe. Pretty standard stuff, yeah. But even though its plot is fairly generic, taking after many cartoons and anime of that ilk, it's what it tries to do that separates it from the others, with some marked differences in the execution that make it fun to experience. Like I always say, just because something's simple doesn't mean it's bad. Basic lunacy is what this show goes for, and it executes it quite well. <sighs> so pretty. <laughs> oh, I'm starting to feel it now. The waves of happiness that are taking me to a distant shore where the world is not such a cesspool of hatred. Oh, oh right. Here are the characters. <sighs> well, to start off with a bang, we have Star Butterfly, Princess of the Dimension Muni. Star is, despite being a Disney princess and all, a bombastic and hyperactive girl with a love of everything. Sunshine, lollipops, and but her love of sparkly and cute things belie her ultimate ass-kicking abilities! With her family's magic wand in hand, Star tears through the baddies after her with ease. Star is, to me at least, a combination of Mabel from Gravity Falls and Wander from Wander Over Yonder, only with more magic. And that's funny, because both of these guys are from other Disney shows. What a quinky ding! Star samples Mabel's zaniness and zest for life with Wander's explosive and adventurous personality, and what gets birthed from that is a character who, by all rights, should be MASSIVELY annoying. But she's actually not. Star isn't clueless or stupid, despite being so crazy and upbeat. She knows when she's fucked up and tries to fix her mistakes before making excuses. She's one explosively entertaining princess, that's for absolute certain. Then there's Marco Diaz, who pales in comparison to Star in terms of personality, but is still, surprisingly, quite fun to be with. Marco's set up to be a safety-obsessed kid who acts like a bad boy, but that personality is quickly retconned. And I mean quickly, like, in the same episode it's introduced. In favor of a combat-minded straight man to Star's quirky quirks, 
And to be perfectly frank, that's completely fine with me. Having a safety-obsessed deuteragonist could be abused so easily, setting up very tired and repetitive plots, but ditching that for a quick-witted ass-kicker who still has common sense is much more interesting. The only thing negative I will say about him, and it's really not that negative anyway, is that Marco is almost an exact clone of Danny Vasquez from Bravest Warriors. That's not even an exaggeration, they really are almost exactly alike. But judging by his own merits, Marco is a load of fun, especially when paired with Star's crazy energy. Lastly, there's the villain of the series, Ludo, a conniving but ultimately ineffectual baddie who tries to steal Star's magic wand with the help of his group of henchmen. Again, Ludo is a bit of a character mashup, reminding me most starkly of King Candy from Wreck-It Ralph and this irritating piece of shit Voltar from the League of Super Evil. But luckily, Ludo falls more on the King Candy side of enjoyability, thank god, and despite being your pretty typical villain fare, he does have some amusing dialogue that rescues him from falling into the chasm of shittiness. Short and sweet. That's exactly how I like it. Especially sweet. Mmm. I could go for something sweet right now. Mmm. Muffin. Magical multicolored moose. How are you on this fine day? Me? Oh, I'm great. Awesome. I'm just reviewing this show here. Is it good? Well, I'll tell you. To begin, Magical Multicolored Moose, I really am digging the way this series looks. Just like the characters, who themselves are mashup of familiar things, the series looks like a mashup of Gravity Falls and Wander Over Yonder, creating beautiful, detailed backgrounds with color and poppiness bursting from every orifice, even though it's sometimes like barfing rainbows in my eyes. And in those background designs are the characters, who are designed simplistically yet memorably, much like Rick and Morty's character designs. Um, am I the only one starting to notice a pattern here? Everything in this series is starting to remind me of something else. Well, anyway, I'd say that the best aspect of this series overall is the relationship between Star and Marco. Well, they do have some of that will-they-won't-they they bullshit that I can't stand. When the two are just playing off each other, having fun interdimensional adventures, they seem like they genuinely enjoy each other's company, despite some glaring personality differences. Now, I'm not one for character pairing or shipping to all you nerds out there, but if Star and Marco do become romantically inclined, I don't think I'd mind all that much. Everything and everyone just brings such a high amount of energy to everything that even though the series is often like a crackhead running on a treadmill while downing a garbage can full of pop rocks at speed, it never gets on your nerves. Your brain kind of gets into the groove and blasts off at the speed of light, totally surrendering and not putting up a fight. Ah, 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 ah. This series' sense of humor is pretty great too, and had me laughing out loud much more than I thought it would, especially with some of the more random cutaway gags. Okay, bye magical multicolored moose. I hope you enjoyed my ramblings. Man, I am just loving this place. Oh, it's so happy and nice, and it makes my heart soar like a flecked fountain filled with fancy flopping fish. I don't ever want to leave. Oh. What is that? No, what are those? No, I don't like this. No, these black clouds are reminding me of something, something I don't like. Something that scarred my heart in the past. <gasps> bad things. No, bad things. It's reminding me of bad things. Such as? You know how I was saying that everything in this series reminds me of something else? Well, yeah, it's true. While most everything in the series feels borrowed to a certain degree, it is all polished up and fancy, so that's not a huge thing. But it is noticeable that this series is kind of like one big quirky Frankenstein's monster of concepts. Also, because most of the episodes are only 11 minutes long, that means that most of their self-contained plots have near-terminal levels of plot diarrhea, especially the pilot episode. 
They try to cram so much craziness into those 11 minutes that it can render a first-time viewer completely and utterly baffled. True, the series does have its slower moments, and it does take time for character development, but the majority of the show is blasting out plot like it needs to see a doctor. And even then, with its insane speed and plot, it still feels samey in some parts, especially regarding the villain Ludo, who basically has the exact same strategy to seize Star's wand every single time. I know, that's the joke, he's a shitty villain, but when you have so little time and so few episodes already, you should never feel samey with your characters. I'm starting to think that all that happiness I was feeling was just so ephemeral. As though the human condition is just... Death and despair with occasional glimpses through the black clouds of misery and torment. Who am I kidding? I'm not allowed to be happy! Just by the merits of who I am, I'm not allowed to be happy! <laughs> So sorry, I I got massively carried away there. <clears throat> okay, so my least favorite episode in this series is Lobster Claws. This episode involves a henchman of Ludo's named Lobster Claws, who gets fired for being a shit henchman. Marco tries to get Lobster Claws to turn to the side of good, while Star believes that once a villain, always a villain. Even though I do like that the script is a little flipped on this episode, with Marco being the trusting one instead of Star, it's just your standard-ass story about a bad guy trying to be good but failing. Pretty big uh. mez all around. So, my favorite episode in this series that has so teased me with happiness is St. Olga's Reform School for Wayward Princesses. In this episode, Star and Marco need to infiltrate the titular St. Olga's Reform School for Wayward Princesses to rescue Star's princess friend Ponyhead on her birthday. But, as Star knows, the school is not a place of learning, but a prison for turning princesses into identical conformist waifs who do nothing but speak properly and act pretty. Jeez, am I talking about St. Olga's or Disney? <laughs> The reason I love this episode is because it shows, in an almost creepy way, how conformity can go mad at times, and how scary that can be to someone as free-spirited as Star. Plus, the background designs for this episode are fantastic, and set up some great potential for future episodes to come. Star vs. the Forces of Evil is a show that's found a happy little identity despite being birthed from so many other shows. It's a show that makes you see the more kick-ass side of rainbows and puppies, and it definitely leaves you with a smile in your face, as well as in your heart. I give Star vs. the Forces of Evil Three and a half eyes out of five So, Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Is it watchable? Well, sometimes it is a little bit too intense on the color. I'm not gonna say no. Is it enjoyable? Absolutely! It just leaves you with this awesome feeling, although the only downside right now is the lack of episodes. Is it memorable? Well, it's such a recent series that it's really hard to say, and the plots do get a little bit samey every now and then, so you might forget some of the actual episodes, but the characters you're not gonna forget. And I, for one, am just stoked for a second season. Whenever it comes out. Maybe never. Want to stay up to date with the latest I of Saul news? You can follow me on Twitter as well as on Facebook at twitter.com slash I of Saul 299 and facebook.com slash I of Saul. I update them every day, so if you want to check out news on the show as well as updates, just follow the links here. Hey everybody, thanks for watching my final series review of the year. I hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget that next week we'll be starting my long movie marathon for Christmas, or the month of December. If you want to see more of my stuff, including the previous episodes, you can see the links playing there on the screen right now. Or if you want to check out my various social media platforms, you can see the links to my Twitch channel, Twitter page, and my Facebook fan page just there on the screen for you, as well as in the description. Have an idea for an animated series or movie you want me to comment on? 
You can leave me a message in the YouTube comments on any one of my social media platforms, or just let me know in any way you can think of to let me know what you want to see, and I will add it to my list. Alright? Thanks again for watching, everybody, and I will see you next week for the start of Saul's big Christmas fuckfest. I think Earth is a pretty great place that's saying something, cause I've been throughout.